Money, flash cars and expensive clothes are things a lot of us probably thought we'd only ever get to see in rap videos and movies. But nowadays it seems that these things are getting more and more close to home than we expected. It seems a lot of people are able to afford these things or even get offered these things for free of nothing more than their talent. We see a lot of people turn stars overnight almost every day, even from being a rapper, singer, YouTube sensation or even an entrepreneur. It seems that success has become a very common thing to the younger generation. As we see young stars like Justin Bieber who started at the age of 15 becoming one of the biggest singers in the world, right down to rapper Chief Keef signing a $6 million record deal at just the age of 17. So it's evident that fame and fortune isn't hard to come by in this day and age. But was it always like this? I think, yeah, I think success in the, um, in when I was younger was kind of uh, a lot more difficult. 20, 30 years ago, talent was the key and you would have to have so much of it to stand out. I think it's easier if you've got imagination and a bit of luck. I think it's easier now because you're not so segmented and held down. Anything goes now. Nowadays it just seems you just get onto some sort of TV talent show and it's kind of... Um, if you've got a bit of talent, you seem to get really far in life without actually working as hard for it as, as you did in the past. I think it's harder. There's a lot of young people trying to make it in this day, so it's definitely harder. Nowadays, anyone can get famous off almost anything, like getting your finger bitten by your little brother, selling fish in a supermarket, right down to even getting slapped in the face by a television presenter. The possibilities are quite endless, and that's all thanks to YouTube. Everyone's heard of it, and almost everyone goes on it. YouTube was created in early 2005, and since then the site has opened doors for a lot of people and has helped create some of the hugest names of today. So I thought, who better to talk to about this than my good friend Jamal Edwards, who owns one of the UK's biggest online channels, SBTV. You've pretty much created uh, most of your success of YouTube, so would you say that it's safe to say that it's opened a lot of doors for a lot of people who are successful today, and do you think that without YouTube, a lot of people wouldn't be where they are today? Um, I've always had my passion for <coughs> filming, so I don't think if YouTube wasn't here that I still wouldn't be doing what I was doing. It might have just been on a different platform, but I definitely think YouTube played a part in like helping people reach an audience straight away. And it's <coughs> everyone is on YouTube, and it's easy. Like there's loads of video platforms out there. The thing that YouTube did different was that it allowed me to upload stuff um, quicker and send it out quicker, and it was just very user friendly so I think um, it's 50-50 symbiotic like you can never say oh I would have made it or all the other people would have made it without YouTube and you can't say YouTube has whatever it's like equal it comes hand in hand so like with that being said you know um, how does it feel like how does it make you feel you know your channel has helped you know create success for a lot of names of like like Ed Sheeran, you know, yeah. and a lot of people who are you know, in the underground scene yeah, who are yeah. kind of getting successful today. And um, how does that make you feel like? Is that kind of like a big achievement to you? Yeah, so that's like one of the most rewarding things is to be able to know that I've created a platform that I can help people on. Like when I first started, I could have made a channel all about me and my day to day, or I could have made it about me being a rapper. But I always looked at it, I wanted to try and get people so when I had that interview with Katie Rowland, I decided to get Georgia. I didn't present it. When I'm filming videos with, um, film a video with, I don't know, Rizzle Kicks, I'll get someone else to film it and that'll make them, like, I want to showcase people more than, like, me. Like, that's how I am, because I don't want to be always in front of the camera. I know I'm in front of the camera now and I've done a few things in front of the camera, but when I first started, my main thing was showcasing talent. So it feels good, man, to know that I can get, I, I've created a platform to allow that to happen. And obviously, you know, like you said about, you know, creating a platform and it's that, like, it's fair to say that, you know, Jamal Edwards and SBTV are, you know, it's, it's own brands right now. Yeah, like yeah, Jamal's yeah. As, as, as successful as SBTV is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how, how is that for you? You know what I'm saying? Knowing that, okay, obviously you've created your platform and now, you know, it's taking you 
to yeah. become successful as well as yeah it's like own. people want to I always look at people want to know who's buying the content so I'll do little things to put my name out there a little bit um, but I like more recently now I've been building um, Jamal Edwards but not losing the focus on SBTV because I always want to still do SBTV that's like my little my little baby like so um, yes yeah, it's, it's, it's it's allowed me like like YouTube has allowed me to create myself as an entrepreneur and allow me to do other things so it's, it's definitely a, a good look oh, and, and, and obviously you know you, you've been in the game for a while you, like, you, you started when you were 15 do you, did you ever think that you know this is where SPT will be today when you started because you know obviously you know you were dabbling in other things you used to do the rap thing you was um, you had a 9 to 5 so mm. when did you think to yourself and say you know forget everything else that I've got going on this is what I'm going to put my all my focus on on this and I'm going to go and get it I think it was when I was working in Top Man uh, I was working there four years and um, so working at Eden one mm. then Westfield and uh, I think I got my first YouTube check and that's when I was like oh yeah I could create something because before that SBT wasn't really making that much money from it um, it wasn't making money at all and I started it mainly for the passion I didn't start it to try and think I'm going to make loads of money so I think when I left there I was like, yes, I can try to transform this into a business, but there was nothing out there that I could look at to go, oh, that's the way to do it. I need to do it exactly like that. So um, it's been like trial and error. Everything's been like a learning curve. Okay, okay. And obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of, you're, you're, like nearly every day you're in you know, an article. In but the one, you know, the, the article that stands out a lot is, you know, you know, you getting into like the rich lists and stuff you know like because obviously like why you does said, everyone you know, you, talk like, about like, this like, like, i don't talk about because this because that's where you come from isn't it? this yeah, is where yeah. you come from and it's yeah, like yeah. you know for us to see like someone you know that's local in yeah. the rich list because rich list is we look and obviously you know there's rumors and you know articles about the company being worth eight million yeah you know what i'm saying which is that's a lot of yeah. money you know what i'm saying but so i have i let I clear something up yeah i own sbtv so you know when people are saying ah oh, man sold out how yeah, can yeah. i sell out when i own my company just because i feature uh, a singer or a feature mm -hmm. someone else like that's my interest my mum was always telling me oh when I used to show her filming all the rappers she's like Jamal yeah. like, you need to branch out a little bit you yeah. can't always be filming these rappers I don't even necessarily like what they're talking about I was like yeah. alright cool I'm gonna start A64 so that's, yeah. that's and it brought me out to a much much bigger market I wouldn't have done what I've done today if um, I, I might have I don't know I wouldn't ever rule it out but all the, the I own my company so if I sold it yeah I yeah. would have that money yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. making my money from then Nothing other yet. things so that um, it's like assets. assets yeah, so, but okay. like all the selling out stuff, I have not sold out. But even, like, even, even with, 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 with what the haters would say, but that is still a good look. Like that, because I'm, yeah, I don't know, a, like, yeah, like, it makes you, uh, yeah, like, like, something that's worth. Because you know, when you started out the camp pool, yeah, know, yeah, I, 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 yeah, personally, it overwhelms me. I mm. never thought I'd do what I'm doing today, and it's like it, it just makes me think never to, to get complacent. So, mm. uh, I could have stopped. Filming guys and acting, I never branched out. But no, I went to North, East, South, West, and I started going all over the country. Yeah. And I think keeping like doing stuff to keep SVTV fresh and pioneering yeah. um, is what I need to do. So it's overwhelming more than anything to be to be acknowledged in the mainstream media like that. Yeah. From um, and I hate that our oh, rags to riches. I come from <coughs> this place. Nah, forget that. Mm. But from where I come from, humble beginnings to now. Yeah. But I still think there's a lot, a lot more work to do. Speaking to Jamal made me realise just how powerful the online world really was. And being someone who was known for my online work, I know that it's not as easy to break into this industry as some may think. So what I wanted to know was, why is everyone so obsessed with becoming successful? I mean, what is it that drives people to want to chase their dreams and become somebody? I think nowadays people are tired of the same old 9 to 5 living on the bread line, you get what I'm saying? I think people are tired of the same old shit. You get me? People want to have better living. So many people, like when you come out of university trying to get a job, it's so hard to get like one in banking or whatever it may be. That like it's like the only alternative solution is to go into these other like industries and stuff. Going into jobs right now, they're not even giving us that. If you know what I mean. Because life at the moment is pretty hard, economic crisis and stuff. There's a lot of pressure for our generation maybe to like live up to our parents' expectations. They're not giving us the opportunity to really do nothing. So. We're just taking it in our own hands and just doing our own thing and trying to make it ourselves. And we need, I feel like there's almost like a revolution like brewing in our generation. But it's not, it's not like definitive. For us, it's creativity. Everybody wants to be, wants to be somebody. They don't, they don't just want to get paid and that. They, they want to be somebody, they want to have a status. And like, 
when you're like when you got that boss status or you know what I mean, you're more independent. And they get they get the idea of, of um probably drug dealers. You know what I mean? And it starts there, then they start going legit. So they think, you know, I can still be cool if I just go legit. It's pretty clear that a lot of people have come from negative backgrounds no longer want to be involved in negative lives no more. And unfortunately, music has become a way up for most. Like, two rappers who have had the privilege of seeing go from being up-and-coming rappers to very well-known rappers in the music scene right now. And that she feel away when I kiss it, then she's like, yeah. <laughs> Mobiles, yeah. Yes. We're air, men all. Um, I want to big up all my fans, Team Play Dirty, everyone that voted for us, everyone that bought our mixtape that got it to top 20 with no major backing. I know you want me, but I'm too young to be rushing things, too young to be rushing things. With over millions of views online, a mobile award, a record deal with Virgin EMI, and a team of very low Play Dirty fans, Crepton Conan have shown many people that there is more to life than the roads. I had a chance to meet up with the duo and exchange some words. You know, how hard was it for you to kind of get in the position you are in now, Car, You know, it wasn't until like 2011 when you looked on the O's where people started saying, bro, like, these men are kind of getting it. Things started kind of taking off for you, look. Uh, fam, all bullshit, it was hard, fam. Because, like, if you think about how long we've been doing this thing, we've been doing this thing for years. You get me? We've had bare doors slammed in our faces. From even, like, I'm talking, like, when before, like, before we did our SBTV freestyles, like, you know, we're asking radio stations, you are, what, come on, get a little, come on, come on, there, do a little freestyle, and they're like, nah, you need to get your buzz up, or you need to go and do that, like, from then, we was getting doors slammed in our face, even features with people that, like, <coughs> we would laugh at the people if I, I said them now, that, that kind of rub man out back in the day, you get me, man, asked for features, and man used to rub man out, and you get me, so, all it was is that we kept pushing, we just kept pushing and said, bruv, they're going to rape me. No matter what we do, they're going to rape me. It's just been hard. That's what I'm going to say. We spent nights outside my house in his car having debates on how we're going to do this. Like, like basically, souls nearly crushed to the fact, like, like bro, we're getting old. Like, you can't be doing music in your, like, your big, still late 20, 30, still trying to do this thing. Like, trying to do this thing, not doing this thing. Like, you can't be doing that, so, like, so it's like, it's been a hard, it's been hard, fam. That's all I can say, like, right, like, that's one thing I tell you. It's been hard, and obviously, we stuck at it, and we had to work hard. It's safe to say a majority, yeah, of people on Twitter, you know, repping that play the play dirty crew you know what i'm saying the play dirty crew so, like, like, isn't it mad like sitting down on twitter and seeing random people who probably haven't even met you lot like obviously your fans having pd on their names crept and conan in their biographies or play dirty this play dirty that don't you lot sometimes think, sit down and think like bro like we we created this this is our empire happening right in front of us you know what we don't even have time to think about it you know it's like we're just trying to utilize it and make it bigger. That's the main focus. Like you see me and crap, we don't ever, we're never content. That's we one thing about us. We don't dwell on it. Like so if something popping, we're trying to make the next thing pop. Like right, cool, we're gonna use that to get us to the next level. So when we're seeing people who've played dirty in their name, like it's like, yeah, we got a fan base. But then they got to a stage like, yeah, they got played dirty in the name, but are they just got it because they want us to follow them? Are they really the support? So we gotta find out the um them people from the real fans, you know what I mean? And then you just sit it all out and it's, it's, all, it's all learning, man. It's just like, it's a, it's a good feeling at the end of the day. When, my, when I'm stepping out of myself now and I'm thinking about it, as you're saying, it's sick, it's proper sick. Like, when I think about it, like, the first person Kim K retweeted when she come to England was a play day. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. So, it's sick, man, it's sick, I'm not gonna lie. Like, we got all the play days as well, man, it's sick, man. I know, like, you lot had stuff going on individually, in personal lives, and obviously Conan had his stuff going on, which he talked about in my story. So um, how difficult was it for you lot to see, like, say, you know what, get everything that's going on, like, eff it. I'm going to go out there, we're going to go out there and chase our dream and make this thing a day job, if I'm saying, to the risk of not knowing whether you're going to make it or not. And in that situation that happened to me, it was like, this is it now, like, you've got to make the decision. I've realised growing up, like, in life you're going to have decisions and that one decision can make or break, do you know what I mean? Like, it can change your life for the better or for the worse. And, we were sitting in the car for like an hour, like a good two hours, just with my friends and then just me and him, like 
talking about whether we're gonna do this music or we're gonna go do something negative. And my friends was even telling me like, yo, Pona, fuck the music thing, bruv. Like, man, got a ride, like, fuck that. Like, not even knowing who did the situation. Yeah. Like, they're like, fuck that. Like, you gotta go and hit the roads, bruv. Like, forget all that rapping stuff, you know what I mean? And even after that, we were sitting down for hours, me and Craig to my cousin, and we were just saying, what are we gonna do? Like, Obviously, because negative and negative is not going to make a positive, you know what I mean? It's like, I can go do something stupid. I don't even know who it is for once, so I'm going to go do something stupid, not knowing even who done it, and then it could go pear shape and I end up in jail, and I just kill, I, like, they've basically won, like, they've killed me, because I'll be sitting down in life, and then I've basically died, do you know what I mean? So I've lost, they've won, do you know what I mean? So it's like, how do we t- take this and make this situation better than it is? Like, how do we like rectify, do you know what I mean? So it was like, we've got to do the music. Like we have to, like this is it now, do you know what I mean? We always spoke about the pros and cons of whatever we do in it. So we always bear in mind raw the actions of whatever whatever we're gonna take. You get me and and as well not knowing who who done whatever everything comes to light in the end, you get me? So fuck it man, man's a talk, you know what? Man's doing this music man. like no, no nothing can stop me. Like not even this is gonna stop me. You get me? Nothing. You know, Conan's mum being mad strong about the whole situation. Thinking about the day it happened when I saw his mum. And she told me, please look after my son. Not a single tear on her face showing. Even though I know her heart's broken. So kind of, you know what I mean? How is man to just be weak about it? You know them ones, these mums being strong. You get me? So we was just like, bruv, we're doing this, bruv. We're going to do it. Like, And then things just started going like this, like this, like... Get me? Oh, it's clicking, just tore, bam, bam. And then it just, it was kind of like it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. You get me? Because even all them times, we were still a bit iffy about it. Yeah, yeah. You get me? But then when oh, it's happened, it was just mad. Man. Like, everything just changed. Our lives literally changed, man. I say, oh, it's just a blessing for me. You get me? Success doesn't only lie in rap music. Nowadays, people are starting to get noticed on many different talents. Now, like my longtime friend, George the Poet. This is the truth I saw before I went to sleep. I knew my time would come eventually, so I celebrate every test ever sent to me because what's about to be was meant to be. It's remarkable to try, but I can't afford to die. Knowing my ambition didn't kill me. Forget the voice of reason. Listen to the real me. He showed us that no dream is too big by selling out one-man shows in the famous Royal Albert Hall and also managing to get himself signed to Island Records. And of what? Poetry. So I decided to go and have a word with him and see exactly what his thoughts were on the matter of success. You know, coming from you know the area that you come from, St. Raphael's in Northwest, which is, you know, pe- people in that area, well, it's not, I'm not going to generalise it, but some people in the area, you know, are into, like, you know, gangs and, you know, crime and stuff. So how was it for you growing up in that area, you know, knowing that he wasn't even involved in any of that stuff he wanted to kind of go out and do something completely different was you was you seen as an outcast in that area or was it tough for you growing up there like what was it like I was, I was on a prison visit a couple months ago and i was thinking like something about being in the atmosphere just reminds me of something and i realized that being in like around that prison atmosphere the smell of it just the, the atmosphere and the tension in that yeah reminds me of the ends like, growing up, that's exactly how the ends <coughs> felt. Like, there was always a problem or there was always someone dealing with their their shit that might just spill over into your life. And, like, there's it just makes you tense. And, like I said, it makes you feel like you have no option but to do certain things. When certain things come your way, you have no option but to respond to them in a certain way and that. But, like I said to you, like, before, the, my whole thing was options. So, like, in the ends, the, the hardest thing growing up was that you ain't got no options? Like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna, are you gonna have that, mm-hmm. or are you gonna go home to like cold and not that much food? Like, what are you gonna do? Mm. Technically, I'm from an elegant city, but I'm not the kind to wine and dine. I grew up around lots of crime, the violent kind. You might have heard about the rocks, the grime, the hype and shine. It's not just Cockney rhyming slang. We got block beef, violent gangs, awkward interactions which most don't force. Children navigating through post cold wars in the states with the least funding. Look at the state of East London. Just growing up, I got sick of waiting for people. I got sick of waiting for certain situations to change or to resolve themselves. I just thought, no, 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 no. That's not how human beings, how men are supposed to live. You get me? Mm. So, I mean, the ends wasn't always a picnic. 
but I'm grateful because it taught me that, like, really and truly. So when certain things in my life are going down, no matter what my emotions are like, no matter if I'm mad, if I'm happy or whatever, I remember what it is to just focus. Mm. You know what I mean? Just try to keep it moving. Because your feelings are a moment. Yeah, man, that ends as hard, but if you're paying attention, you'll learn things that you can't learn anywhere else, cuz. Yeah, a lot of people are starting to catch on to, you know, what you're doing. I've seen, you know, people like Ed Sheeran tweeting about you, and I'm sure Ed, um, Edges Elba actually came to one of your shows to watch it. So, you know, how does that make you feel? Because, you know, you don't, you're not a rapper. You don't have, you know, bottles and, you know, girls in bikinis in your videos. You, you're in a video in, in, a, in a forest talking about, you know, a babe mother that's probably struggling and trying to do education. So how does that make you feel knowing that you're getting that recognition that somewhat that rappers are even trying, still trying to get now? And that now you've kind of got that and off, you know, something that isn't looked upon as something that, you know, could get that kind of recognition. I, I did my thing as a rapper, but it could only go so far because people that pay attention to rap only pay attention to certain aspects. Mm. You feel me? So, like, to be able to break away and just try and keep, try my best to keep it real, like, not what everyone else's definition of keeping it real is, not just talking about road or hardness or whatever, just talking about what's in my head and in my heart. So, like, what this whole journey has taught me is that people gravitate to that. Mm. I understand what people mean when they say real, recognise real, because no matter, like, I got fans in like Belgium and Holland and obviously Uganda like where my parents are from and where I go back every year like and they like they talk to me about the content of my poems mm. someone from India was telling me a couple of months ago like she had a nice upbringing in India but she she can relate to like that you know like just my sometimes when I talk about the, the politics of corruption yeah. or the way people go on and that because it's all about the human psyche and that it's about the human psyche in it so, like, I just realised that our experiences are universal. we got a lot more in common than we do in difference. And if people gravitate to what I'm saying, it will make sense. I shouldn't second-guess it, and I shouldn't try to switch it up. Because what they liked in the first place wasn't just the flow, it was the realness. So, you know, getting recognised for the stuff you've been recognised for, coming from the area you've come from, you know, when you started, you know, did you ever think it could take you here? Because, you know, like, you know, when, when, from the area you're from, you know, people kind of have nice cars and think about it all from negative things, you feel what I'm saying? So, you know, you now knowing that you've kind of managed to get all these things, you know, selling out World Albert Hall, you know, signing a record deal, you know, being able to afford this, afford that, a place and this, that and the other. How is that to you? It's mad, man. It's, it's, it's surreal. Like, like, I remember growing up here, just across from my yard, there was just a Porsche. There was a Porsche. All the, I don't know who's. I mean, I know whose it was, yeah, but like I can't comment on how yeah, yeah. my man got the Porsche in it. But I remember just looking at it, and also directly across from my window is Wembley Stadium. Yeah. So you see, like the stadium, and you see man driving, and the man them had just fresh everything every day in it. But obviously they'll just disappear every now and then. And fucking, like I remember thinking, like raw, like I want that. I want that. Like I was writing a, I was writing a poem about it earlier today. I was thinking, I want. That. I swear to God, I want it. But there must be another way mm. to get it. And like obviously, where I'm from, people don't just go and do what they. People don't do what they want. They do what they have to, innit? Yeah. Then they think they're doing what they want, but they're really playing someone else's plan. Yeah. And just it's short lived. So like to be able to fully say, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was patient. I played the long game, and it's paying off. I think it's important, not just for me, but it's important for the mutes, man. Like, they have to, like, like when I was younger and I was wondering, is there another way? I needed that answer. I needed mm -hmm. someone to look at and be like, right, you done it like that? Yeah. Like, fully, like, there's no <laughs> no catch. All right, cool, I can do that. That's, yeah. all, that's all you need, isn't it? Like, yeah. that's all you just see someone doing something and you, you're like, oh, it makes sense, it's doable. So, yeah, man, it's, it's very humbling. I try not to get gas, no, don't get high on your own supply. Yeah. Just like, Keep your feet on the ground. Try and think about like how you can use whatever you got to 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 give back in it to um to share the blessing, spread mm. spread the wealth in it. Meeting up with all these people has really inspired me, and I hope that it's done the same for all of you lot that have watched it. Now I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to say success only comes from being rich and famous, because that isn't the case. As success can be anything from passing a driving test or an exam, or even something as simple as learning how to cook. It's just however you decide to look at it. 
But hopefully after watching this documentary, you will realise that no task is too big. And with the right amount of focus and patience, you can be who, what or where you want to be. I'm Arnold George and this was my success story. I just hope that I'm an inspiration. Yeah, all eyes on me. I just hope that I'm an inspiration. Yeah, all eyes on me. I just hope that I'm an inspiration. Yeah.